Hello guys and welcome back to my Fate Grand Order Lost Dull 6 gameplay. So yeah, um, Britain is in ruins. Yeah, things have gone in a very bad direction. Uh, we're currently going towards Manchester. Something has happened there. Obviously, uh, Gawain was supposed to go there. So I'm guessing, yeah, something went wrong. Let's see. <clears throat> right. What, what the what the devil is going on here? It's only been a day and a half. How is all of Britain burning in only a day and a half? I mean, I, I knew Morse was bad news, but this is unbelievable. That is true, you know, like in a day and a half from that to this, yeah, crazy transformation. No, Morse don't use fire. Something else did this. This has to be the red calamity. Looks like the fire's coming from Manchester. Ah. Right. Isn't that where we made the promise with Vargas? That we'd help some fairies migrate to proper human history if things went belly up? That's right, Vargas told me about that. <clears throat> she said she had already talked to Manchester's resident about the prospect of migrating outside Britain and that they all loved the idea. Can we stop by Manchester first then? That's where we are headed. We need to find out what's causing the fire anyway. I'll be, it'll be something of a detour. But it shouldn't affect our entry route into the pit. Okay. How are things on your end, Da Vinci? All systems green. We're making good time at 60 knots or 111 km per hour. You want to head to Manchester, right? I was just thinking we should make that our first stop too. We have to keep our promise to Bargast after all. We should be there in 10 minutes, but it's surrounded by a massive fire. At least the ferries inside should be safe. The town's ramparts ought to be... To keep the fire out. We'll have to move the ferries into the storm border all at once since there won't be time to guide them one at a time. So Fujimaru, I'd like you and Marsh to head there ahead of us and let them know we are coming. I doubt anyone is... I, I don't know. Like, I feel like everyone's dead over there. I'll send Shadow Border down to the surface as soon as we arrive in Manchester's airspace. It'll land automatically but you'll need to but you'll still need a driver to get there. Can you do it, Manuir? Sure thing, guess I'm the only one who can since Javi's gotta stay here as commander. I'm impressed you accept it so readily, Manuir, but I suppose you are the border's longest serving pilot. True. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Besides, I've had it easy up until now. Great, okay, I'm counting on you guys to round everyone up and fill them in. Will do, just be ready to welcome them abroad. Right. Damn. Man, I feel like a paratrooper. Da Vinci thought of a thought up an autopilot mode for everything. Scanning for hostile entities. Good, no moles and nearby. Outside temperature is a uh, thousand degrees Celsius. Okay, how the hell are we gonna go outside? That's like running around inside a forest fire. Make sure your mystic code's on good and secure, Fujimar. Oh yeah, because of the mystic code, I guess. Okay. All right, full speed ahead to Manchester. Let's go. Damn. Open the hatch. We're heading out. Huh? Manu, the hatch is still locked. Oh, did it like melt shut or something? Oh my god, I feel like that's what happened. We need you to... I'm sorry, I can't. You can't go out there now. Damn it, what the hell's going on here? What's happening? You guys said Manchester was supposed to be this quaint, idyllic town, right? So what the hell am I looking at? Minier, what are you talking about? Come, look at the monitor. Right, what's going on? Damn. What are those? They're corpses, a goddamn mountain of corpses, and not just fairies, humans too. There you go. Like, you know, I, I said that I, I get the feeling that things are not going to go as we think it should. And they didn't die in the fire. Oh yeah, they have been staked. You know, like... The human corpses are all torn apart. It looks like by fangs. And the fairies were hacked to bits with swords. Which means... The fairies were cut down. 
help she's gonna kill me she's gonna kill me yeah okay so Vargas has gone completely berserk something's wrong with lady Vargas yep I don't want to die I don't want to die she said we would all survive yeah she wasn't looking good in the previous video she said Kaldi would keep us safe even if the great calamity struck here no I don't want to die anymore I hate fire I hate knights help save me Oberon I don't want to be born just to be killed all over again. Oh boy. Alright. Yep, it's Vargas. That chain, the noise of the chain. Oh. Uh, Vargas? That's Vargas. She doesn't look anything like you described to her in your reports. Did, did she do this to Manchester? Yeah. I've got to get out of there. Out there. Pujiman, get back here, you idiot. Vargas, tell us what happened here. Ugh, Kaldia, you're here. Just like you promised. But you can't be here. Leave. Go away. You need to escape. Britain's fairies are... It's all my fault. I should have known better. Ah. Oh, boy. Master, quick, get be get behind inside the get back inside the shadow border. It's not safe out here. Oh, Josh, is she ramming the? Okay, dear God, she just kicked the border like it was a damn football. Get the border out of here, Minier. That's the magical energy eater Da Vinci wrote in her reports. She's sucking up Senpai's life force. I'm trying, but the sting wheel is not... Oh, hang on. She's going away on her own. Guess she's not too interested in us. She probably restrained herself. You know, you can see that there's still a little bit reason left. She's headed outside the city, I think towards Gloucester. And she's not alone. There's a bunch of black dog-like creatures following her. She's got them all lined up in a procession. It's like watching some twisted real-life Pied Piper of Hamelin. Is that the Black Calamity? Oh, okay. Mm. Wow. Wait, so she's going towards Gloucester. Okay. Oh, no battles again, right? Hmm. What's happening? Why is it... What the... Oh my god. Okay. I was like, what's going on? Okay. I've got the Shadow Border safely stored away. Are you guys ready? To head to the pit now. Uh, right, okay. Yes, Manchester has been completely destroyed. Given what has become of Vargas and the fact that she's now leading a possession of black dogs, I believe it will be best to refer to her as the Calamity of the Beast from here on. Ah, okay. Regardless, though we could take her on now, I agree that we should make our way towards the pit first. Okay, I trust there are no objections. Huh, yeah, I guess. Hey, come on, just cause it's true doesn't mean you gotta be so blunt about it. She might have been our enemy, but Vargas was one of the few fairies in Britain who... It's okay. I'm not sure why Vargas slaughtered all the man of Manchester, but whatever is the reason, it's no surprise she became a morse after doing so something so horrific. Yeah. I have no problem calling her a calamity now. Okay, if you're sure. Just don't push yourself too hard, okay, Artoria? In any case, we will have to fight Vargas eventually since she is the source of the fire spreading all over Britain. The walled cities are still holding out, but the fires completely devastated the forests and the plains. It also looks like the smoke from the fires gathering in the sky and forming thunderclouds. She's consuming the lightning they generate as a primary food source. What? 
smoke from the fires gathering in the sky. For, oh, whoa! The smoke is forming the thunder clouds, and she's consuming the lightning. Her magical energy grows with every step she takes. We are going to have to stop her before she becomes a literally unstoppable monster. Yeah, so shouldn't we like try to get her first before that happens instead of going to the pit? Even so, we need to check on the pit first. Okay, there's both a red calamity and a black calamity, right? We can't go to war unless we know the enemy's strength. Luckily, the calamity of the beast is still moving slowly. She seems to be headed towards Oxford right now, but at this pace, it'll take her a good four to five hours to get there. Right. That should give us enough time to come up with a plan of attack. Got that, Artoria, Fujimaru? Yeah. Ah, what is that? What is that? Oh, God, it's gross. I don't want to look at it anymore. Stop that, Lukar. What are you talking? Ah, you can see the pit, can't you? Save the wine for later and put it up on the monitor now. Our primary objective is to acquire the sacred lance at Camelot, whatever we, whether we use it or not. So we need to get a handle on what's going on with the pit as soon as possible. Uh, yes, sir. Putting it up on the monitor now. Okay, what's going on? Who? What the? That's a weird looking thing. What is that? The black mist seeping out of the pit is actually severe multi-layered curse contamination. Black mist seeping out of the pit. Whatever you do, don't touch it. It'll make you go insane and rot your whole body. Is that Kerenonos? Looks like... Oh yeah, it, it is uh, the Kerenonos, I think. Because, oh yeah, in the, in the mural, the silhouette did kind of look like this. Although, whoa, this is amazing. The inside of the pit is almost like a whole other dimension. Every signal I fire at it just dip disappears. It's basically a cursed bottomless pit. Wow. No, never mind the pit itself now. That's the real problem. What are you doing, data collection? Get to work already. I'm trying, but I can't. I can't get a read on the magical energy or its spirit origin. I'm not even getting any real numbers for its mass or volume. Even when I compare it against the pit itself, just the part we are seeing here is showing up as over 2 kilometers long. Whoa. Whatever it is, it's impossibly big. There's no other creature like this. Not even in the deepest ocean trenches. Okay. Yeah. Grimmer, is that the same god that was present during Bridgen's Genesis? Yeah, that is Kerenos, isn't it? Yep. That's Kerenos, the beast god. In Celtic mythology, it's the king of beasts and the one who knows hell itself. Here it's being responsible for Britain's creation. Okay. That thing's why the old god of wisdom chose me to come here as his vessel. I see. Beast god, okay. Right. That said, he didn't mention how much it's changed. If this is his idea of a joke, I ain't laughing. That thing's way too big for anyone, human or fairy, to do something about. Okay, well. Right. Oh my god. It, it looks like a... You know, like a... Like a plushie. <laughs> like a plushie toy, like... Oh my god, it's a big thing. Doesn't look happy though. That's a creature from the mural. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Is this really happening? Please tell me. It's just a bad dream. <laughs> Zeus, I can understand. He was a machine at least. Ivan the Terrible might have been a massive mammoth, but that made sense for the frigid tundra. But that, that's a living creature. <laughs> yeah. There's no way any living creature could be that huge, and it's just standing there right in front of Camelot. <laughs> wow. We can possibly go in to collect Rongomania now, or can we? I don't think so. We have to defeat it first, I think. What do you think, Administrative Advisor? Is there a chance we can get past that thing? I hate to say this, God of, but I simply do not know. <laughs> yeah. We simply know far too little about that creature to say anything for that certain at this point. I can't say that viewing it through the monitor is enough to give me palpitations. 
That creature is pure concentrated curse. In fact, I dare say there has never been a maledict god more powerful. It would be suicide to set foot in Camelot right now, and yet I suspect that creature is precisely why Queen Morgan prepared the sacred lances. Take a look at where she kept them. Oh, uh, yeah, that makes sense. In, in the gate, you know. Then Ash, I mean Queen Morgan, was preparing a me means to defeat that thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that is why she never used the lances before. She had a plan to protect Britain all along. Then we should go to Camelot, the sooner the better. But no, we cannot go there, the curse. I agree, besides the big guy hasn't re so much as budged. Maybe he's just there existing and that's what he does. I don't think so. The servants ought to be able to withstand some degree of curse. If I say we do what Fujimaru says and head down to Camelot throne room now before... We can't, it's too late. It's all too late. Oh boy. Oh my god! The black haze is leaking from the pit. Oh, it, oh my god. It's the same as the calamity we saw in Norway. Then that must mean it was... Yes, the calamity was just came on us. And... <laughs> what? One of many. Oh, okay. That sounds fantastic. Never mind that now. That hand thing is creeping up the wall towards Camelot. Oh yeah, oh god. It's just destroying it. No way, it's destroying the castle. A magical energy god is going haywire. The cursed contamination emanating from the pit just skyrocketed. It's currently at 640 million tons and still rising. It's a humongous tsunami of a curse big enough to cover all of Britain. Oh no! Whoa, 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 what's going on? Oh my god, more hands are creeping up. We cannot go to Camelot anymore. Hard to port 180 degrees. We need to get out of this airspace now. If that stuff swallows up the border, we are done for. Don't let even one of his fingers so much as graze us. Damn. It's no use. I'm giving it all we've got, but we've not got any more altitude. Terminos must have a hundred, two hundred. I can't even count how many hands it's got. They're everywhere you look. We can't avoid them all, let alone get away from them. Damn it, Da Vinci, what about the Shadow Border? It won't work. Even if we could get everyone on board in time, there's nowhere to run with the ground cover and cursor. Yeah, exactly. There's no way out of this. I think this might be it for us. <sighs> Contact in 765. Goodbye, everyone. It's been swell knowing you. Right. Oh. What? What is that? What is that? What happened? Right. We have visibility again. Those icky things are gone. What was that? Our engine outputs back where it should be. We can get out of here no problem now. Oh good, that makes all the trouble I went to worth it. Who is this? Now do you all see why NFF services can- <laughs> Oh yeah, that's um, Koyanskaya. I, 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 for a moment I was thinking what was that? I recognized that pattern. Oh yeah, it's Koyanskaya's. Okay. Gan NFF services guaranteed safety protection is the best in the business? That voice, that honeyed ice cold dangerously alluring witchy voice, that can only be Tamamu Fitch Koyanskaya? Yep. Yeah, I was wondering, I was like, I've seen that pattern before, that pattern. It's Koyanskaya's tales. Lady Murian, did you leave the lights off again? Uh, you're going to ruin your eyes like that. 
I just got back from the coronation. I'm sure you've heard about it, how it turned out, but... Bloodstains? Yeah. Murian! Oh, Kuyaskaya, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. I still hadn't said a proper goodbye. Ah. Oh, perfect. I actually came here to say goodbye myself. Uh, thank you so much for your help with the fundraising and product distribution in Gloucester. Most may be the one, the only creatures I managed to acquire here in Britain. But I still enjoyed some lovely days out thanks to your generosity. I promise to repay this favor one day. As soon as I've finished making my fry meat zoo, you'll be the first to receive an invitation. <laughs> that, that sounds great. But I'm sorry, I'm not sure what's going on anymore. I, it feels like I'm still dreaming, and once I wake up, you're worried you'll forget everything? Not to worry, I'm the beast of taming. Unlike humans, I never forget my deaths. Thank you for calling me your friend, my eccentric little princess. <laughs> it would be an honor to purchase your joy and grief for my catalogue. I never sell them, of course, I'm quite fond of you. See, then do you think you could pay me for them now? I was an idiot. I couldn't keep my anger, my hatred in check. I'm responsible for this. I should have realized who the true enemy was. But instead, I was used and manipulated right to the end. So, at the very least, you'd like to get your revenge? You just leave that to me. I'll follow these bloodstains and find whoever. No, I don't think she wants revenge anymore. Like, she, 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 she knows now. What happens when you go that path? No, I, I want you to at least protect Britain. We fairies may be fated to die out. We can never atone for our sins. Even so, I still want you to protect Britain. To protect the land of the faith. I don't want a great calamity to just wipe us all out on its own terms. I want us to reach our destination, even if it's the end of the line. Can I ask this of you, Koyanskaya? Even though you're all alone in this world, just like me. Oh, she changed her plan. Protect Britain in the true sense of the word. Hmm. All right, I'll do it. If you're looking for me to protect rather than destroy, it's obvious what means protecting. Rest assured, NFF service has the situation well at hand. Oh, I guess that's why she decided to uh, save uh, the shadow, like, you know, like, the, the Kaldia. And, uh, because, yeah, I guess that is one way of helping this, you know, like, this lost build this Britain out. I'll make sure the ones who can make the real villain's life hardest, yeah, there you go, stay safe and sound. <sighs> well... Yeah, there you go. That is her tails. I, at, at first I was like, I've seen that pattern somewhere. Where have I seen it? I cannot remember. And then now I'm like, alright, that's her tails. That's Konaska's beast form. Marines, can you put that up on the monitor? It's no use. Our cameras have been jammed. And our sonar is not working either. Ah! Do keep those annoying pulses off me, would you? They're messing with my concentration. Hmm, sonar jamming, huh? As with Limbo, it's only a matter of time until we'll see need to settle things with Koyanskaya. I was hoping to collect some data that would help us eventually subdue her along with her inspir some inspiration from my deductions. <laughs> yeah. Well, are you going to escape or not? The emergency evacuation service expires soon. If you need my services again, I'm go it's going to cost you dearly. Right, get us out of here, here double quick. I certainly don't want to be stuck with a preposterous bill. <laughs> But we will pay you in full for this service eventually. You can count on that surely, as you can count the bruises we left you with after death <laughs> in Olympus. Calm down, Gordol. <laughs> He's just... Oh, in, in case it wasn't clear, that was a reference to the fact we trounced you during that. Okay, Gordol, I think you should calm down. Oh my god, the, the curse. Crap, you just lost power to the engines again. Can it? Can it, Jobs? You're messing with her motivation. 
No, it's not that. Pressure is building up on the ground again. It looks like even Konaska couldn't hold it off for so long. Yeah. Minior, get us out of here. Whatever you have to do, do it. I don't care if you have to ruin one of the Triton engines. Make it happen. Aye, aye, sir. I'll apologize to the engineer later. Damn. And that's as far as the friend discount goes. The rest is up to Kaldia. As for me, I think it's time I return to my headquarters. <laughs> yeah. So, this is Keranos's curse. Easy to mistake it for a weapon capable of destroying the world. <sighs> but this curse isn't meant for enemies from the outside. It's for cursing your own kind and yourself. A curse of self-destruction. Oh, okay. So, only the fairies and in, the, in this lost world. The only way I could defend this ship from it was to absorb it myself. What a sorry state of affairs it turned out to be. Yeah. Well, at least we are out of that. And so the Kaldian ship barely managed to escape from the central from Central Britain. Vargas now transformed into an enormous calamity of the beast, continued wreaking havoc in other cities. Having crawled out from the pit, Kainonauts continued exuding seemingly endless curses. Wow. So yeah, we have two big enemies now. The fair villages that dotted Britain's forests burned to the ground which itself began to crack and fall apart under the strain. Two hours had passed since the storm border first set out with the goal of saving Britain. They couldn't save anything. The residents of Norwich came to blows over who would escape on the two ocean liners, eventually devolving into murderous mob of fairies and humans. Wow, they're still fighting. In a barber shop on the main street, a kind young human man comforted a fairy woman who had succumbed to panic. The residents of Oxford who had moved there with the hope of becoming the next privileged classes were destroyed when they were unable to fend off a Morse attack. Without the fan clan there to protect them, they were utterly powerless. Although Salisbury managed to defend itself by keeping the gates closed, it was coming to an even more gruesome end than any of the other cities. I wonder what Aurora is doing. Londinium continued to burn in silence. The few remaining roundtable army soldiers welcomed the fairies who fled there and did their best to fight off the Moors. Though in truth the roundtable army soldiers were already badly injured and no longer able to fight. So the fairies who sought refuge there summed up the last of their courage and defended the soldiers for as long as they were able. The residents of Gloucester disappeared relatively painlessly one at a time. A young girl who had been freed from the Western Ranch some time before made the journey back to Gloucester after a series of trials and tribulations. A young girl who has been freed from... Okay. She braved her way through the flame to rescue her former master, a failure of a fairy who had been helpless without her. Wait. Gloucester disappeared in a young girl from Western Road sometime before we made the journey back to Gloucester. Former master, failure of a fairy who had been helpless without her. After a tearful reunion, the girl and the fairy joined hands before being swallowed up by the fisher in the ground. Wait, do we know these characters? I feel like maybe I'm forgetting them. Uh, okay. Right. This is horrible. All of Britain's beauty gone. Indeed, Miss Curialite. Once the other lost wells, tree of emptinesses, were gone, they disappeared as well, but the inhabitants were none the wiser. Wait a minute, just a sec. Um. Nothing like that, Britain is experiencing a true apocalypse. Even if there were some reason that the land of the Fae had to meet such a dreadful end, I shall never be able to forgive the architects of this cataclysm. I yes, well, I understand why you would be so heartbroken by this, Kyrielite, and you have every right to be angry, Holmes. 
but we still need to do something about it, yes? If left unchecked, that haze seeping out of the pit is going to cover the entire planet, right? Isn't there something we can do to seal the pit? Uh, yeah, you think we, we, we can seal that pit with that huge thing on the end there? No, there isn't. We can't even go close to the storm border anymore. The 12 Rongominias were our last hope and they've all been destroyed along with Camelot. There's nothing we can do to stop the collapse. Chris Magus is too predicted anymore. I'm afraid she's right. Britain's destruction is inevitable now. And from there, the destruction will spread across the rest of the globe until proper human history, the lost belts, and everything else is swallowed up by the darkness. Hey now, there's still hope. I'd hold on for at least another hour before giving up. Who is this? Sure, the fairy sins have been accumulating for 14,000 years. Sure, we are now faced with both the calamities the prophecy predicted and the corpse of a god that had just popped out of the pit. There's nothing proper human history can do about any of that. Who is this? But all that stuff is also cosmic fantasy only made possible by this situation. The British Lost Belt came, became its own proper human history by virtue of turning into a singularity. That is a distortion in history. Okay. In other words, repairing that singularity will restore history, resulting in the land of the faith never having ex existed. Oh. Okay. I see. Yeah. Okay. And isn't that Kalia special? Who are you? Can you please show your face? Oh, it's Merlin. <laughs> That's the voice I heard in my dream before. Yeah, it's Merlin. Okay. Before coming here. Yeah, I recognize it too. I'd know it anywhere. Yep, it is him. Oh, there you go. There he is. Where was... Oh, she, he was trapped inside. Oh, I guess as soon as Camelot's walls fell, he got released. Didn't he? Hey, hey, everyone. Merlin the Mage of Flowers is here. At last, sorry to keep you waiting for so long. Now, come on, cheer up. It's not like all of you to give up so easily. In fact, the real battle here in Britain is just about to begin. Okay. Right, so there you go. Merlin is here. Finally. Time of creation. No battle still. I'm, I'm just waiting for when we'll have to fight that big thing. Like, good god. Now then, I believe greetings are in orders. Good day, Chaldeans. I am the amazing Merlin the Great. The, I've actually been free for some time now, ever since Morgan was killed. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. And her garden disappeared. I was thinking, I was like, why? At first I was like, oh, like, Morgan is dead, he should come anytime now. But then he didn't come. And now I was like, oh, maybe because the, the walls fell down, that's why he was released. But so he has been released a while ago. Which would make sense because Morgan died quite a while ago, before all of this happened. So yeah. So what was he doing? Sorry for getting here so late. I needed some extra time to get everything ready. Okay. <laughs> Is that you, Kapaluk? No fear staying behind in Kalia without me. I'm sorry, Merlin. That was just Senpai's faux impression. Is that a thing in Kali? <laughs> now, who said that could be a thing? Oh, she, he's disappearing. Oops, sorry about that. I'm still a little shaky. I'm not exaggerating when I say this feels like a walking dream for me. Waking dream. Uh, you see, I'm not actually there with you. What you're seeing now is an illusion. Yeah, I could guess. Otherwise, how would you suddenly get inside the shadow border? <laughs> That also means I can only hear your voice. Oh, wait, you cannot. Oh, that's why he mistook that to be four. Okay. I can't see what either of you or Mush look like right now, Fujimaru. So I'm afraid our joyful reunion will have to wait a little longer. But don't worry, I'll get to, this, to see your grown up faces in just a few hours. I'll be waiting for you at the entrance to Avalon, making sure I look nice and respectable. Entrance to Avalon? Where is that? Like, yeah, I know, like, Artoria and Morgan ended up washed up from Avalon. But how do we go there? Merlin? You're Merlin? Oh yeah, she has never seen him before, I guess. That's me! Is that the child of prophecy speaking? Sorry to surprise you like this. 
I know we have a lot to catch up on, but I'm afraid our private conversation will have to wait until things are somewhat less intense. Let's see, I believe Mr. Gordoff is Kaldia's current commander. Yes, is he here? There now too? Yes, he, I, I mean, I am. This is Gordoff Musik speaking. So you're Merlin, are you? I won't bother asking why you're just showing up now. You're right that we have more pressing matters than you're barging in. What I want to know is what you meant when you said that there's still hope. Nice, you pack a lot of bluster into that voice. It seems you're pretty much the exact opposite of the prior acting commander. Wait, who was the prior acting commander? Oh, Romani. <laughs> For a moment I forgot that he was actually <laughs> the commander. He acted much like our friend, so I just forgot that he was actually <laughs> our, our leader, you know, like of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. But I digress. When I said there's still hope, I mean, I meant there is still a way to stop this collapse. Let me cut to the chase. I'd like you to send the fairy of paradise back here right now away. Okay. Antonio, uh, you've been hearing Avalon calling to you ever since you finished ringing the bells, right? Oh, really? It's time for you to fulfill your duty as the fairy of paradise. Once you have, it'll be possible to erase the singularity and defeat Kerndoros. There's a way to fix this hopeless situation somewhere in paradise? But I'm not qualified to... Qualifications, smallifications, none of that matters. Kenonos' curse will weaken once the fairy of the paradise who rang the bells of pilgrimage returns to paradise. Oh, okay. Interesting. Won't get rid of it entirely, but it'll stop it from getting stronger. The god of wisdom who pawned this power off on me confirmed as much. He must be from a different mythology, but he knows what he's talking about there. Right, so... Arturia needs to go back to Avalon so that the curse will weaken? After ringing the bells, okay. So wait, so after ringing the bells and... Uh, right. Isn't that right? Ambrosius? Ambrosius? My job is to get Arturia to paradise by hook or crook. Uh, is that Merlin's another name or something? As long as she's rung the bells of pilgrimage, it doesn't even matter if she's alive. What then? How will she? What? I'm sorry, Bells of Pilgrim. Yeah. It doesn't matter if she's alive, still alive. But then how will she go back to Avalon if she's not alive? Right, of course. I should have known that that's how it should go. Grimmer, why would you say something like that? So, I've actually kind of known about it all along. I could see that's why Grimmer was here the whole time too. Okay, can you guys please clarify what is going on? I, I just, they're just talking in like round, complete roundabout. Like, I need like a proper explanation. Like, I can kind of guess what we have to do, but I need to hear it from, from their mouth and properly. Because there's still a few things that I'm not sure about. That's expressly for the worst case scenario. Grimmer, we're near, nowhere near that point now. He's in the best possible condition right now. I can't see it, but I can sense it. I have no doubt that the Fairy of Paradise, the Avalon La Fay, will fulfill her duty of her own violation. Even if someone convinces her this is ridiculous. And we should all just give up and enjoy the time we have left. They're still not telling what the hell, okay. Fulfill her duty of her own. Okay, uh, besides you have all have no choice but to come to Avalon. There's a spirit cavern that leads to the planet's inner sea from the corpse of Albion. The border dragon that sank into the bark dark bog. Hmm. Now that Britain has began to collapse, that path should be open again. All you need to do is go spelunking for one hour. That's it. We still, we're still talking about the largest holy ground in the Magecraft vault. It won't take let just anyone in. It should open for Fujimaru as a representative of humanity. Marsha is the knight of the wrong table, the fairy of paradise and I guess there's room for her attendant Muramasa as well. Okay. 
the rest of you will have to wait there until they get back. Okay. Well, Godolf, what do you have us do? Yeah. What else can we possibly do? Captain, set a course for the dark bog at once. Uh, that was the Lake District, right? Do you know the coordinates, technical advisor? Sure do, that part won't be a problem. But apparently the only ones who can enter this uh, spirit cavern are the four Merlin's best friends. Yeah, so they'll just have to wait, I guess. That's not a lot of fighters for a trip as potentially dangerous as this, and that's not even mentioning how much I wanted to see this for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like we don't have any other choice but to send them off and trust things will work out. Are you ready to go, Fujimaru? Don't worry, Da Vinci. We'll, we'll tell stories of what we saw over there <laughs> after we come back. Yeah, but are you alright, Artoria? Hmm, I think I'll be fine. Besides, I'll just end up fighting with Grimmer if I said no. And you know, thinking about it some more, I'm actually kind of excited. This is basically be my first time visiting home. Yeah. Understood. I'll update our strategy to include Merlin's instructions. Fujimaru, Marsh, Artoria, Senji Muramasa. You four will make your way through the spirit cavern and head for the planet's inner sea, the paradise of Avalon. The storm border will remain on station above the lake district. Captain Nemo and Da Vinci will focus on piloting the border. If anything should try to attack us, Grimmer and I will fend them off. Wait, please. This is all new and unfamiliar to me, so I doubt I'll be of much help. But Britain is my home, and it's only right that I should take part in any battles we may face. Oh boy. Huh? Absolutely not. If anything, we should be resting right now. You're in no shape to be fighting anymore, right? Your only job now is to get the treatment you need and recuperate until you're back to your old self. That's an order from the Child of Prophecy, got it? If you even think about defying me on this, I'll completely abandon my duty, is that clear? Yes, child of prophecy, I'll follow your orders. I have to say though, I never thought I'd see the day you got seriously mad at me. <laughs> You've always been one to keep your feelings in check and not make a fuss. Yeah. True, Arthur is great at pretending to be a model student. Y you think? I thought I've always been pretty open and forthcoming with my feelings personally. Sure, whatever, you sh you're just turning <laughs> your brain off and doing something stupid. The rest of the time, you pretend to be a big old nervous Nelly. What do you mean? I've never done anything stupid. And what is this nervous, ne nervous Nelly anyway, bro, Masa? <laughs> right. Hmm. Okay. Okay, hopefully Merlin actually explains what's happening, like, after we go there. Right. Oh, wait, we'll have to fight. Is that a Lancer? Oh no, is that... Oh god, is that... Is that Melusine? I really... I, I really hope not. It's probably her. Oh god, she... Because he yeah, obviously we're at the Lake District. I'm sure Melusine will be there. Oh lord. Like we discussed earlier, we will be standing by in the storm border in the Lake District airspace. We expect the operation to take about... Three hours, that's all the time the ship, no, Britain has left. Three hours. We have no way of knowing what will happen in the spirit cavern. So please try to be as careful as you possibly can, Fujimaru. Got it, entering the spirit cavern inside Albion now. Okay. That felt different from the water mirror that sent me to the past in Norwich. Does this mean we are still inside Albion's spirit cavern now? Can we still contact Caldia? No, we can't. We are cut off now, just as Da Vinci predicted. Gathering coordinate data now. 10, 20, 40, 80. 80? Master, you're not going to believe this, but it looks like we are 80 km below ground now. Damn, that's a lot of... Damn, that's even deeper than the pit, a lot deeper. Are we even sure this is underground? It's completely pitch dark and it doesn't even feel like I'm standing on anything. You're not wrong, this world is on a whole other layer, other dimension, to put it simply. You're just able to bypass all the ground in the way thanks to Albion. Oh, but be warned that it gets much deeper. In proper human history, the 80 km mark is where Albion gave up the ghost. What? Albion gave up the ghost? But in this lost belt, Albion managed to make a route all the way to Avalon. I'm guessing this has something to do with her lore? 
80 kilometer mark is where Alvin gave up the ghost. Okay, I'm guessing this has something to do with her lore. Alvin managed to make a route all the way to Avalon, alright. Unfortunately, the path wasn't wide enough for Albion to get through, so they still died on the surface. Oh. You mean there's a spirit cavern like this in proper human history too? Yeah. That's right, though over there it's known as the spiritual tomb. tomb. In proper human history, the spiritual tomb of Albion ends at the 80 km mark. Oh, okay. Beyond that is a world known as the fairy realm, which no human can enter. Okay. But since the British Lost Belt is all this world's fairy land, yeah, there's no such restrictions here. So we can't keep going down as far as we like. I see, that makes sense. In real world distance, you're starting in the 400 km mark and going further down to the Beyond D layer 2700 km away. That is where you'll find your destination, the planets in the sea. Wow. Wait, so we are 80 km below ground now and our destination is 2700? Yeah. Kilometer below ground. How the hell can we enter that kind of distance? Cover that kind of distance. Yeah, simple. You take a shortcut. Okay. When I said I'd take an it'd take an hour, I wasn't basing that on how fast you travel. I meant that's how long it'd take. Period. I'll use a series of transit time reduction spells to bring you to your destination. Okay, that'll help. Anyway, this must be pretty dull for you. How about you turn on the light? Oh, we can do that. Oh, okay. Oh wow! Oh, there's a mural. Oh my god. Whoa, it's a cave now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So, what do you think? Does this cave feel more like a cavern? Now go, keep moving. The transit time reduction I mentioned is kicking in with every step you take. This place is Earth's memory. Well, so much like a space of pure of information, really. The idea is to skip past all the vague, hazy memories and get you straight to your destination. That, that should be a huge help, but, um... Is that Merlin? <laughs> yeah, kind of, I guess. So finally, showing us what you really know. <laughs> That's not what he looks like. Uh, hmm, there's something wrong. Oh, I see! Struck dumb by my true glory, I get it. Very well then, heap your praise upon me. You can even worship me if you like, Muramasa. It's been a long time since I've shown up after all. I need to leave a strong impression as possible, given the short time I have. Oh boy, you definitely left a strong impression. Let's just keep what he looks like right now to ourselves. Good point, we probably shouldn't pry too deeply into this. <laughs> yeah, he probably made a mistake in... Okay. More importantly, Senpai, that mural over there, yep. I think it was called the Abyssal Worm. Oh, are you seeing the priestess's memory projected there? Perfect. Oh yeah, they did kind of mention a priestess that was also there. I'll take the hour you'll be traveling to tell you how this all began. Okay. This is a story of the British Lost Bell's genesis and of what purely the fairy of paradise's mission entails. Alright. Okay, can we finally hear it now? It became ocean at the end, there was ocean at the beginning. After the shooting star passed, the land all ran into rivers. Okay. Long long ago, as far back as time can go, six fairies went outside to find the world had become an ocean. Okay. Uh, yeah, we know this. Uh, this is awful, they thought. How terrible our world has become. Then a large shadow rose up from the ocean. It belonged to a giant fluffy creature. On its shoulders stood one of the animals the fairies believed was gone. The six fairies and the gods soon become friends. It wasn't easy living in the ocean. There was nowhere to go and nothing to do. But the gods made things better for the six fairies by sheltering them from the waves. The ocean without the waves is nice, but we still miss having land. So the six fairies offered the god their joy, and they offered the god their wish. Then they offered the god himself. What? They offered the god himself? Okay. And so the fairies' wish was granted. 
Then after the rejoicing ended, oh my god, they tricked the god into drinking the poisoned wine and he died. Oh, okay, great. Typical fairies. Ah. Oh wow, so here, even here they poisoned them. Like every, like with, here they poisoned, in Arthur's situation that happened, and now like Mnokhnoria also they poisoned. The fairies love poisoning others, that's great. And so the fairies acquired the god's body. Like, here's the thing, you know, I have been wondering, like, they kind of told this little story a little bit earlier as well, didn't tell us the full story. So I was wondering, like, it seemed like Kerdunos and the fairies were good friends. So why is Kerdunos in the pit? And now why is he, like, trying to destroy Britain? And there you go. And so the fairies acquired the god's body. They made the body into land on which they could live. Okay. They were grateful too to be able to make use of the crying screaming animal the dead god left behind. Make use of the crying screaming animal. Ma what do they make use? She was their only human. Oh my god, that was a human. Oh, that was that the priestess? I think so. She was the only human, but one simply wasn't enough. So being very careful not to kill her, they cut her to... Okay, so this person was apparently the... Um, I guess you could say the blueprint of all the other humans. Because they mentioned how there was one human whose like, you know, form was used to make the other humans. Right. So being very careful not to kill her, they cut her to pieces. They cast a spell on her to make sure she wouldn't die, no matter what they did, and they used every last piece of her. Oh my god. Thus did the Isle of Britain come into being. Thus did the great mistake begin. May the first six fairies find salvation. May the first six fairies be cursed for all time. Yeah, so all of their ancestors yeah obviously all the other fairies so they have all been cursed from here oh okay i see i guess that is why this whole morse curse is exists or whatever it was a curse from the big like because they committed this sin from the beginning everything was doomed from the get-go there you have it you may have heard it before but that's the story of britain's creation yeah we didn't hear this version though it's the first time we're hearing something like this any questions yeah a few is that why, yeah, indeed, the first six fairies, the progenitors of the six clans, killed Kerenonos, yep. The pit you saw on the surface is Kerenonos' grave, and the curse spilling out of it even as we speak is his rage. Hmm, but why would the fairies do such a thing? I don't know, greed? He was in their way, way, okay. This all happened 14,000 years ago. When the six fairies came out from paradise and onto the surface, earth was already covered in a sea of nothingness. Wait a minute. When the six fairies came out from paradise. Oh, so the fairies also... Ah, I see. So the six fairies were from paradise from the beginning. And they came to the surface and they saw earth was covered in the sea. And that is why they prayed to Kernos and... The one who ended up helping the six stranded fairies was a Celtic beast god who had come up to the surface just like they had. Yeah. A god who later came to be, come to be known as Kernunos. Kernunos and her priestess, his priestess, the lone human who had managed to survive just like the fairies had, both did the best to protect the fairies. At first the fairies were grateful for their help. But the sea of nothingness never changed no matter how much time passed or no land appeared. I see, so that's why they decided to kill Kerunos so that they can get the land. The fairies blamed Kerunos for that. They thought he wasn't strong enough. What the hell? What's more, they didn't particularly like his priest. What? She was constantly telling them to sort themselves out and consider the consequences of their action. Eventually, the fairies couldn't take it anymore and decided to deal with Kerunos permanently. They figured that since they didn't have any land to stand on, they could find a substitute. And since Kerunos was so big, they thought his body could just serve fine as a small island. 
But of course, Kenunos was a god, they couldn't kill him easily, so they came up with a plan and held a festival. They told Kenunos that they were holding the festival in his honor to worship him and then held a banquet with lots of wine. Kenunos was delighted that he was being celebrated for being the phrase first official god. He probably figured that they were trying to change their thoughtless ways. Oh yeah, well. And so against the priestess's wishes, Kenunos attended the banquet and and was poisoned to death when he drank the wine. Some rejoicing that turned out to be. What about the priestess? What happened to her? Yeah. The fairies used her as a foundation. No, the base ingredient for the... Yeah, there you go. Like I said. For the humans that came later. The truth is, every human in the British Lost Belt is an inferior copy of the priestess who was killed during the British, Britain, Britain's genesis. At any rate, as a ray, the fixed fairies went on to create their own stone and forest children and grow their clans. As time passed, they transformed more and more of Kenunos' body into land. But after a hundred years, things stopped going quite so well for the fairies. The children kept dying, turning into fallen trees, adrift on the sea. Oh. New generations kept being born, so the number of fairies never decreased. And thanks to the humans who have been copied from the priestess self, Britain slowly developed into a civilization. With civilization came new societal roles, the fairies made new types of fairies, and their forest flourished like never before. But they also kept dying for no reason whatsoever. Hmm. Eventually, the six progenitor fairies realized Kerunos' rage was the cause. Even though Kerunos' soul was gone, his body wasn't completely dead. In fact, his heart alone was still burnt with the fire they used to cremate him. Even in his death, Kerunos' body continued to smolder with anger and curses. He could very well have come back to life at any time. The fairies were so shocked by this that they fled Kerunos' body. Wow, they kill them first, now then, then after that they become shocked. After seeing that Kerunos is angry. Great. Fortunately, that was right around the time their children's corpses were starting to form new ground. Oh, so they used that to run away from the, from Kerunos and like go venture in the other direction. And fairy corpses are essentially made from the same stuff as the planet itself. Yeah. The fallen trees became earth and stone and quickly filled the sea, almost as they were trying to cover up the fairy sin. Hmm. That's how the Lost Belt began, that's why the Isle of Britain uses fairy corpses to grow and expand. Yeah, okay. After several thousand years, the fairies had acquired their very own Britain. But all the while, Kenonos' body was still there. Oh, interesting. So... Then they, at first they were only on Kenonos' like that that big body, that big pit. That was like a small island that they were in first. But then after Kenonos died, you know, like they you know like and, and their ancestors, not ancestors, their successors, they also started dying and they also died. They became more and more land and started expanding. And now this is after so much death of fairies and them coming back again, this big Britain has formed. A divine grave that would let no ocean filling fallen tree near it. An indelible reminder of the fairy's sin, a reminder that rejected their corpses. Hmm. Eventually the fallen trees blocked off the ocean's water for good and Kenunas' body was left behind at the bottom of the sea. Wait a minute. Um, a divine grave that would let no ocean filling fallen tree near it. An indelible reminder of the face scene, a reminder that rejected the corpses. I see, that is why the corpses, the, like you know, the sea didn't accept the corpses and they become land on top of it floating. Eventually, the fallen trees blocked off the ocean's water for good, and Kenunos' body was left behind at the bottom of the sea. That is the true nature of the pit. It's not actually a pit, it's the remains of a patch of dried ocean. Oh. Okay, interesting. Let me read this part again. Will there divine grave? Okay, an edible remembration reminder rejected the corpses. Fallen trees blocked off the ocean's water for good. Kenos's body was left behind at the bottom of the sea. 
Oh. Nature of the pool? It's not actually a pit, it's the remains of a patch of dried up ocean. Right, okay, I can kind of understand. The island made by killing a god, the face original sin. It wasn't just Kerenos they killed, but the priestess who served him as well, yeah. No, she wasn't just killed, she was desecrated and used as a tool for these 14,000 years. No wonder Kerenos is so pissed, I doubt even killing every fairy in Britain would be enough to satisfy him. Although, why did he come to the surface anyway? Isn't it kind of narrow-minded to curse the whole damn world just because you got killed? Specific especially after you went out of your way to get involved with the fairies? What? Why did he come to the surface? Isn't it narrow-minded to curse the whole damn world just because you... No, why would he, like, what? Why is this narrow man? I, I don't understand. Like, that's probably because. Wait, wait. Why did it come to the surface? Uh, okay. A narrow mind because the whole damn world. Oh, word. Not. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. I didn't understand this first. Uh, okay, Muramasa is talking about the world. By by world, he mean I think he means like yeah, because this won't be contained in in this Britain. It's going to spread everywhere. Like even proper human history will be there affecting. Oh, so that's what he, he's saying. All right, I understand now. I was like, no, like they're the ones who killed him. So how is this narrow-minded or how, like yeah? But okay, I understand. So he's saying like the whole world because you got because yeah, obviously like the fairies are the ones who sinned like. Everyone else, like, didn't really do anything. After you went out of your way to get involved with the fairies. That's probably because Kernos was an envoy of paradise sent to reprimand the fairies. Oh. Okay. Interesting. So, hmm. that was the whole reason he came here, to punish them. Oh, so he came here to punish the fairies. Then... He kind of became friends with them, and then the fairies killed him. Oh wow, that's even worse. Like, <laughs> like you know, like you do something bad, and the teacher comes and tries to scold you, but the teacher kind of understands your situation and he kind of sympathizes with you, and he's like, right, you know what? Okay, you guys are fine, you know, like. Try not to do this anymore. And then you do the same freaking thing again. That kind of thing. They did. And and not only did they did that, so yeah, like they even killed him. So that's literally what happened. In a in a simpler way, yeah, in a school you like you did something bad, the teacher comes, tries to scold you, and then he, he kind of talks to you and realizes that you know what? Fair enough. You know, like you did something wrong, and he's like from next point onwards don't do this and then you do the same thing and you blame him for for whatever you did or something like that and and like you know like try to that's what what they did because they blamed Kerenos for like what the hell this is like this is weird like wow I don't think his heart was in it though. Yeah, there you go. Like he, he came and he kind of became friends with them. And like this mural shows, Skernos was a very kind god by nature. And they spit on his face. Like even after like the Kernos was supposed to reprimand them and he decided not to. And these fairies, they, they spit on his face after that. But the face might have found him terrifying simply because he existed. The reason why the world became a sea of nothingness. Does that mean the reason the sea became a world of nothingness is... That's right, that's the point where the source will diverge from proper human history. And its greatest mistake... Wait a minute. Uh, that is the point where the source will diverge from proper human history and its greatest mistake. Okay. You see, 14,000 years ago was the greatest turning point of all humanity. 14,000 years ago. Wait, what happened then? Ice Age? I don't know. 
Maybe you heard something about the planetary envoy that almost destroyed Earth's past ancient civilization back in Olympus? Okay, I've probably heard but I don't remember anything about that. Wait a minute. Oh, it's a uh, okay, Sephir, isn't Oh, uh, Alright, yeah, yeah, okay, I know, I know, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 they did talk about this in uh, Olympus as well. Yeah, right, okay, uh, I, yeah, I remember. Uh, and this is the whole thing where, like, in Fate Extella as well. Yeah, we did. This was a whole, it was a white civilization destroying giant named Sephir who fell from a shooting star. Oh, that was the shooting star they're mentioning, okay. Zephyr wiped out countless pantheons and almost destroyed every civilization on Earth. Yeah, and where Olympus diverged was that, um, like, the gods and the goddesses, they were actually, like, aliens and they were, like, machines. And that, that's how, like, you know, like, Lost Bell 5 diverged from proper human history, where in proper human history, the gods were gods. But here, you know, like, there's that whole... And this, okay, this diverged in a different way. Almost destroyed every civilization. In the end, it was humans who managed to defeat it, not gods. I heard they did so by using divine constructs, weapons made in the planet's inner sea, meant to combat planetary threats. Ah. I also heard that the sacred sword Excalibur was, yeah, the greatest such weapon, and that it was, that it was created in Britain. Okay, that's right. I just realized that nobody here has ever mentioned true like we have talked about the staff of selection The spear of selection. Nobody talks about the sword of selection. Where the hell is that? Nobody has mentioned Excalibur ever The very idea of a sacred sword just doesn't exist in this version of Britain So that must mean Excalibur was never made here that's right, and I'm sure I don't have to tell you what happened as a result. Yeah, okay. This In this what-if world, humanity never had the means to defeat Sephar. So Sephar destroyed the world and made it into a sea of nothingness? Is that what happened? That's why they were wiped out. Sephar destroyed all the planet's landmasses and took them for itself, leaving only a sea of nothingness with a few aquatic life forms. Wait, I don't understand one thing. Why wasn't Excalibur made here? Like, what, what, what changed here that Excalibur never existed here? Like, in proper human history, Excalibur existed. Why not here? Excalibur was never made here. Why? How did that change from proper human history? Why was in proper human history Excalibur made while here it wasn't? So why was the sacred sword never oh he just meant okay. Never made. The reason for that is both exceedingly simple and unsurprising. Its creator slack Okay, what? Its creator slacked off. The Airy, that is the six fairies who were supposed to forge it in the planet's inner sea. Oh, they were supposed to forge it. D6, okay. Decided it would be okay to <laughs> What? Take a day off just this once and went off to have fun? Oh my god, imagine. Imagine slacking off and the whole world getting destroyed because of that. <laughs> For one day. It was only once they noticed something had gone wrong with the world and went up to the surface that they realized the consequences of their choices. And these fairies had the gall to freaking kill Xenoros after that. What? But they figured there was no changing the past and refused to accept that the world's destruction was their fault. Oh wow! <laughs> so Karen was the one god who had taken shelter in paradise to keep uh, his priestess safe, was sent to reprimand them and make them atone for their sins. Ah, I see. But then the fairies kills Karen and his priestess, the last surviving human. At this point, they could no longer return to the planet's inner sea. Only those free of sin may pass. Oh, meaning only fairies without sin can go to paradise. I see. Right, okay. It's the same for all of Britain's fairies, and as they're all descended from the original six. Yeah, it makes sense. 
None of them can enter the planet's, planet's inner sea, and so they continue to suffer on that island of sin to a toll. Oh, wow. So that's how this lost belt came into being. That's right, it all started with a sacred sword never being made. Eventually, fairies chosen from the planet's inner sea were sent to the surface to correct this mistake, which is the the child, uh, the, the, the fairy of paradise. The first one was Vivian, there you go. And the second one was you, Caster. Yep. Right, so the Ash is actually Vivian, the, you know, like, the second Morgan. I think the first Morgan was supposed to be, um, yeah, Arthur's loving sister. The second Morgan was supposed to be Vivian, the Lady of the Lake. And the third Morgan was supposed to be the, the Avatar of Britain. Your mission is to have the six clans admit to their mistake and inherit the mystic needed to create the sacred soul. Oh, that was the mission. Have the six clans admit to the mistake, right? Inherit the mystic. Create the sacred soul. Oh, is that why she needs to actually ring the bell? Because it's like a way of them acknowledging. I think so. Inherit the mystic, okay. The bells of pilgrimage indicate that the clan heads have accepted yeah, their sins and the fairy who rings all of them becomes the sacred sword itself. Oh, that's why uh, Grimmer said that even if you it, you need to die for it or something like that. Fairy who rings all of them becomes a sacred sword, I see. So that is the duty of paradise. But um, as Morgan Vivian refused to do that, yeah. Because she wanted to, after all, once the sacred sword was made, the very premise on which the lost belt is built would cease to be. I see, that does make sense. Because yeah, Excalibur would be made and then, okay. Like, like that, you know, like lost, this lost belt of this lost world wouldn't exist. I'm sure you learned about this yourself when you rang the bell in Orkney, Caster. Oh, okay. Okay. And in spite of that, you continued on your path, defeated Morgan, and now you're here with Fujimaru. You must have had to face so much doubts to come this far. In fact, you may never be entirely free of them. But even so, you're still here, which is why I believed you have what it takes to see this through to the end. Anyway, I know that was a lot of talking, but we're here almost at our destination now. Okay, so there you go. That, that, that explains the duty of paradise, why Morgan was so threatened by it, and it also makes sense why not only did she refuse to do the duty of paradise because she feared from the after Excalibur would be made she feared the lost spells end and she refused to do that not only that but also she got fearful of the fact that if Artoria does the pilgrimage and she becomes Excalibur then again it is going to be the same result the lost belt wouldn't exist so that is why she got threatened by that and decided to take care of Artoria and stop her from doing whatever she is doing. Okay, okay, that makes sense, I see. Hmm. Right. <clears throat> the convictions of the last dragon are waiting up ahead to see if you are qualified to proceed. Wait, it's just another thing, let me think about something. Um, the curse, okay. So I'm guessing the curse is like Kerunos's curse, which Morgan kept at bay by being the queen and staying on the throne. That still hasn't been properly explained. They did explain about the curse and how uh, Morgan suppressed it. And also they talked about how they killed Kerunos and how he started cursing everyone. But okay. Only those free of sin may pass. That sin doesn't refer to the original sin you are born with or the sins you have committed in your life thus far. It refers to what you are about to do and what your hearts are resolved to now. Oh, what you are about to do. It's your reason for living, your principle for existence and prosperity. The way to the land of hope will only open for those who demonstrate true strength in these regards. Okay. Okay, so we'll have to fight someone. It's gone. Everything on the surface is gone. Sky, the sea, the life, everything I've ever seen. My records will never again grow in number. 
Wait a minute. I will never again know new joys. You who would choose a sacred soul's wielder. You who would chant the king's name. If you seek a new world, then leave all the traces of the old behind. What? What is going on here? It's gone. Everything on the surface is gone. Sky, sea, life, everything I've seen. Record will never grow again in number. It will never know new joy. Sacred. You who chose the sacred soul to wielder. You who would chant the king's name. If you seek a new world and leave all traces of the old behind. My name is... Oh. I am the last dragon and the one who chose to continue flying. Oh, this is Albion. Above the ground instead of returning to the inner sea. Oh, okay. Wait. Now that I know who this is, let me read it again. It is gone. Everything on the surface is gone. Okay. So talking about the... Right. So since Albion was trying to find his way inside the inner sea that's why he's saying everything on the surface is gone sky sea light everything i've seen records will never grow in number i will never knew again new, no new joys and who you who would choose the sacred soul's wielder you who would chant the king's name if you seek a new world and leave all traces of the old behind okay if you can overcome these tears, I will offer my heart to the forger of the stars. Right, okay, so this is Albion. We'll have to fight her. Right, okay. Oh. Only three servants. Right, so, okay, who do we take? Oh, obviously. Who else? No, wait, wait. Oh, no, wait, wait. Let me take Morgan instead of Muramasa because I feel like Morgan is going to help me survive with double Castoria oh I cannot take double Castoria okay wait a minute right okay let me change Morgan with um who should I take here Yeah, waiver because I don't see anyone helping me in this situation. Okay, waiver. Uh, let's put this on waiver. Right. All right, let's go with this. Oh, okay. Let's see. Oh, there you go, Red Dragon. Attack or defense of critical rate. What? Increase attack or defense or critical rate for yourself when attacked. Oh, okay. So we have to defeat her without dealing much damage. Or like, without dealing much. Okay. Uh, right, no problem. Okay. Okay, critical rate up. Critical rate up. Oh boy, critical rate up. Right. Okay. Alright, let's see. 
Right, good damage. Now for the crit. Nice, nice. Perfect. Beautiful. Right, another one. Let's deal another. Oh. Let's put um, Castoria's things in action as well. Right, I, I think I can probably deal with this in, an, uh, in this turn order. Let's see. Right. A little bit more. Castoria can save me from the upcoming attacks. Alright, the crit didn't hit. It's fine, no problem. Well, there well, that takes us good care of that, I think. Yeah. Alright, okay, there we go. Ah, I can hear the bells tolling. My heart may have stopped, but yours yet beats strong. Welcome home, Avalon Le Fay. May the sound of hope echo into the future. Right. Is that light from outside? That's right. That is the entrance to the planet's inner sea. This is the land of the young. Sirnanog, the eternal spring. This is the place where many life forms have dreamed of finding. Land of the young. Ternano. Welcome to an Avalon whose time has come. This is where the journey of the planet's birth ends. To an Avalon whose time has come. This is the place where the journey of the planet's birth. Journey of the planet's birth. Okay. And they're not going to show us. Okay. Next section, I guess. Right, I'm going to end it here. We are here in Avalon La Fay now. And... Uh, whoa, what the... Hey, new map. I guess there's, there definitely needs to be a new map. Because we're not in Britain. Entrance. The moment a planet is born. Alright. Wow, we are here in Avalon now. Great. So that was it, guys. I'm going to end it here. Um, yeah, the 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 fairies, the fairy of paradise's mission has been revealed. So it is basically like you know, like we, we get to know about Kernonos as well. The whole story this time we get to know what Kernonos did. He was to spent here to reprimand, you know, like to reprimand this these fairies, the ones who slacked off one day to make Excalibur and because they slacked off that one day um, the planet is screwed you know like all of this happened and that is why Kenonos was sent here and Kenonos was a kind-hearted god and he was like alright you know what yeah they made a mistake you know but they're, they're nice fairies let me become friends with them and even after that even giving them, after giving them a second chance the fairies they had this great idea to poison Kaironos and kill the human so obviously like <laughs> wow like they actually gave them a second chance and they screwed that up as well so then after that obviously Kaironos got mad it started cursing them and the fairies got afraid and after that from the planet's inner sea more fairies not more but two more first it was Morgan then it was 
a caster that is Castoria. So they were set to actually go, you know, uh, make these fairies repent by, you know, like when they'll be able to ring the bell of pilgrimage. That is their way of accepting their sins. So I guess that is why they say like uh, forgive, like, like, you know, forgive us, forgive them or something like that, you know, that they chant kind of that chant that they kind of say right so you know like ash was sent to go there convince everyone ring the bell of paradise uh, sorry the bell of pilgrimage the six of them and then uh, you know like she herself will become excalibur and then since she beca would become excalibur you know like the planet's destruction would be like you know stopped and this lost belt won't come into being and it'll, it'll go back go back to the original like you know state or somehow like you know this whole thing will be excised some way and that would never have happened so it's going to go back to proper human history how it was supposed to be that was the plan morgan however since she wanted to rule over britain and uh, you know like kind of you know like for the fairies and everyone like decided to protect britain herself she decided to abandon her duty because obviously if Excalibur is made, then this Lost World wouldn't have ever existed. She didn't, she didn't want that. So that's why she became, she, she left the duty and she became Queen Morgan. And then when Castoria was sent, obviously Morgan wasn't, like was scared of Castoria because she knew that if Castoria does the pilgrimage and completes the pilgrimage and becomes Excalibur, the same thing is going to happen. It wouldn't matter. If she left the duty or not, another person is here now to take care of her duty. So she's going to do it either way. That's why Morgan decided to tell Castoria that do not do the pilgrimage. As soon as you ring one of the bells, I'm going to attack you. And that is what happened. So there you go. Right. So yeah, a lot of my questions got answered. There is still a few of them I can think of that hasn't been answered. Hopefully they get answered by the end. For example, I still don't understand what's up with Habitrot. Why did Habitrot not rep like they did kind of mention like where Morgan said something to Habitrot about being like, oh, like you will be erasing yourself from this whole thing. Like the only time you will be able to stay is from, um, you know, like when the, you know, like the child of prophets that is Marsh arrives to when Marsh is sent back to past. Only that time you'll be able to exist. So, and that's why I guess her whole memory got wiped out or something. I'm not exactly sure. But I still don't understand why they needed to do that. And like, like that, that part still kind of confuses me. Hopefully we get that answer as well. I, I hope they will. I, I'm guessing they will let us know. Because for now we don't know where Habitrot is. I'm sure she'll come back by the end of it again. And we'll meet her again. Maybe then they'll reveal what's going on with her. That's one thing that I still haven't gotten an answer to and I think they will reveal it. So is there anything else that I don't understand? I'm trying to think. I feel like most of the questions have been answered. Yeah, I think most of them has been. There, there's, the, the only thing, like I said, that still hasn't properly been answered is the habit or situation. Other than that, I don't think there is any question that needs answering anymore. There's a few, few speculations that I made and I think it is kind of true. The whole thing with Aurora, I'm sure we'll get to know. And uh, yeah, so a few loose ends here and there. I'm guessing they're going to tie it up by this little section. This little section we'll get. But anyways, that is it guys. Um, that was my uh, gameplay for Lost Pearl 6. Now that we know the truth, oh boy, these fairies are just irredeemable. Like, good God, like from the beginning, they screwed up and even after screwing up, they got a chance and they then screwed up again and now they're screwing up again. And oh, that's interesting. So, oh, wow. Now that I think about it. So this place was actually kind of like, like purgatory for them. You know, this, this Britain was a place where they were supposed to suffer for their sins. And that is why this whole curse, this moss disease and everything, you know, like, like this was a place for them to suffer while the paradise is obviously they have been barred from paradise because you know like you've committed a sin you cannot be you cannot go back to paradise how, how will that become 
So these fairies, they were from paradise. They came out, they committed so many crimes and so many sins that they got barred off and they became started to suffer in in this place and which like i said it's kind of like a purgatory for them and uh, yeah so and now it's like literal hell it was purgatory up until now now it's literal hell the whole britain is burning it is hell over there now so it has transformed from purgatory to hell completely and yeah like everyone is suffering everyone is burning Oh boy, right, so that is it. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, or you haven't subscribed, comment down below. Anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, I'll check them out. And yeah, that is it, guys. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys um, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow with another video on Lost Man 6. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.